Sundays at Zoo Canadians with roots in Pakistan and features community information and entertainment. And not just because this is a second home to me, but because <laughs> of people like you! <laughs> Every day, this movement grows stronger because you stand up for the people around you. Because you work hard. Nazreen, Dil Apna Pakistan ke saath intakhaab Ahmed. Aaj aapko Canada ke election ke results ke baare mein batayenge. Justin Trudeau jo hain, wo dobara elect ho chuke hain apni पार्टी की एक सीटों के साथ और कंजर्वेटिव जो हैं उन्होंने 121 सीटें ली और इसके साथ साथ ब्लॉक की 32 और एनडीपी की 24 सीटें और ऑल ग्रीन्स की थ्री सीट्स नजरिन ये मैं आपको बता बताता चलूं यहां पे कि इस इलेक्शन में मुसलमानों ने तकरीबन 12 सीटें और इसमें एक्टिवली पाकिस्तानी जो सियासतदान हैं उन्होंने तीन सीटें ली हैं लिबरल की तरफ से जो कि बहुत अच्छा साइन है यहां कनाडा में डेमोक्रेटिक जो इंस्टीट्यूशंस हैं वो इतने स्ट्रांग हैं कि इसमें कोई भी कनाडियन जो है वो इसमें हिस्सा ले सकता है और अगर वो काम करता है और उसकी पार्टी का प्लेटफार्म बहुत स्ट्रांग है तो वो जीत भी जाता है और समटाइम्स इंडिपेंडेंट भी जीत जाते हैं और ये डिपेंड करता है कि आपने किस तरह से सोशल काम किया है कम्युनिटी में और नाज़रीन इसके साथ-साथ मैं ये आपको बताता चलूं अब अभी लास्ट वीक मैं न्यूयॉर्क गया था और न्यूयॉर्क में यूएन के सामने मैंने एक प्रो, एक मैसेज रिकॉर्ड करवाया था अपना अपने प्रोग्राम के लिए और आप लोगों के लिए वो भी आपको दिखाएंगे और इसके साथ-साथ हम आपको कनेडिकट में गए थे वहां पे हमारे दोस्त हैं उन्होंने सैम्स चिल्ड्रन के बारे में चिल्ड्रन हॉस्पिटल और उस लाइक यहां पे जैसे बीसी में वैनकूवर का चिल्ड्रन हॉस्पिटल है इसी तरह वहां पे भी एक चिल्ड्रन हॉस्पिटल है उसमें फंड रेजिंग हुआ था उसकी भी तफसील दिखाएंगे और कुछ अपने दौरे की कुछ वीडियो और ग्लिम्स भी दिखाऊंगा देखते रहिए वैनकूवर की जान दिल अपना पाकिस्तान नाज़रीन दिल अपना पाकिस्तान के साथ इंतखाब अहमद आज यहां पे यूएन हेड क्वार्टर्स न्यूयॉर्क में यहां पे आए हुए हैं और यूएन जो दुनिया भर की नजरों का एक मुर्तकज होती है नजरें यहां पे लोगों की जो के देखती हैं यहां पे दुनिया भर के कौमों के फैसले यहां पे होते हैं और वो फैसले ऐसे होते हैं कि यूएन अगर चाहे तो किसी भी मुल्क के सोशल मुआशरती सियासी और इस तरह के मसाइल जो हैं वो कम कर सकती है लेकिन हमने यूएन में जो फैसले होते हैं और या तो उन पे अमल दरामद नहीं होता या वो फैसले जो के बायस होते हैं कौमों की जिंदगी में और खास तौर पे मुस्लिम वर्ल्ड में ये जो यूएन के फैसले हैं वो बहुत ही बायस रहे हैं 
और उनके लिए कहीं भी ये नहीं हुआ कि उनके फ़ायदे के लिए कोई बात हुई हो और यूएन में हमारे आने का मकसद यही है कि हम एक पैगाम दुनिया को दिल अपना पाकिस्तान के थ्रू पेश करें कि भाई ये यहाँ पे जो फैसलों के लिए एक एक सिंगल आवाज़ मेरी एक सिंगल आवाज़ जो है वो भी अगर किसी के कान में पड़ जाए और उससे कौमों के फैसले उनके हक में हों उनकी आज़ादी उनकी माशरती उनकी सियासी उनकी इकतसादी जो जो सल्ब की जाती हैं आज़ादियाँ सल्ब की जाती हैं वो उन पर अमल दरामद ये यू एन ही करवा सकती है यू एन में आने का मकसद यही है कि हमारा दिल अपना पाकिस्तान का एक पैगाम जो है वो ह्यूमैनिटी का पैगाम पूरी दुनिया को पहुँचे और पूरी दुनिया ही आ, पे और इस पर अमल दरामद हो और हम उम्मीद करते हैं कि कश्मीर के मसले पे यूएन जो है अपनी करारदादों पे अमल दरामद कराएगी कश्मीर का मसला ह्यूमैनिटेरियन मसला है वहाँ पे सत्तर दिन से ज़्यादा हो गए हैं कि लोग जो हैं वो उन पे आप ये देखें कर्फ्यू की हालत में बच्चों को फूड नहीं है मेडिसन नहीं है बच्चे स्कूलों में नहीं जा रहे जबकि एक स्कूल में जाना एक बच्चों का एक ऐसा हक है या दवाइयाँ या हॉस्पिटल खुराक ये सब एक बहुत बड़ा उनका हक है इंसानों का जो उनसे सल्ब किया गया है तो जमहूरीत की आड़ में किसी और मुल्क की अपने मुल्क के एक हिस्से उस हिस्से की जिस पर नाजायज़ कब्जा किया गया है उसको अगर इन्होंने इंडिया ने कब्जा किया हुआ है और इंसानी हकूक की पामाली हो रही है उन इंसानी हकूक की पामाली को ख़त्म करने के लिए हम आवाज़ उठाते हैं और हमारी आवाज़ में आप शामिल हो देखते रहिए वैनकूवर की जान यूएन के साथ न्यूयॉर्क में कीप वाचिंग दिल अपना पाकिस्तान That's not how we make progress. We know that it's by investing in Canadians and in their future that we move forward. <laughs> After the previous government raised the age of retirement, we restored eligibility for benefits to 65. And earlier this month, we announced that we're going to increase old age security at the age of 75. यू डी सी डिज़ाइन नक्शों के लिए वैनकूवर लोअर मेन लैंड में जहाँ भी आपको ज़रूरत हो आप अपने नक्शे यू डी सी डिज़ाइन से बनवाइए ये आपके मकान को चार चांद लगा देंगे नंबर है सेवन सेवन एट एट फाइव एट एट सेवन नाइन फोर वैनकूवर की जान दिल अपना पाकिस्तान Sundays at 3:30 p.m., Dil Apna Pakistan brings you Canadians with roots in Pakistan and features community information and entertainment. tax and accounting services call zahid choudhry at unit 2277501288 street 604779498 zahid choudhry for your tax and accounting services keep watching dilapra pakistan in our community safe and growing the economy for everyone in our community safe and growing the economy for everyone keep watching dilapra pakistan I want to welcome one particular aspect of the Queen's speech and that is the commitment that we will continue to play a leading role in global affairs defending our interests and promoting our values we will position ourselves at the forefront of the most complex international security issues that is why madam deputy speaker the sins and omissions of this queen's speech are quite intriguing because there is one point on earth where we have a particular legacy where promises were made by the world community where promises were broken by the world community and where the world community has now left the most terrible state of injustice and that is kashmir so i was surprised that there has been no mention in this debate today 
about our historic obligations to make good on the promises that were made back in the 1940s. i know that much of this debate quite rightly has centred on the issues around brexit but our obligations our duties our moral responsibilities our history our commitments stretch much much wider than that. so madam deputy speaker i think that we should step up and do far more to raise our voice to try and bring a resolution to what is going on right now. Some people say that this is some kind of conflict between two nuclear powers. Only it was as simple as that. This isn't a conflict between two nuclear powers. This is a conflict between three nuclear powers. China today is the world's biggest consumer of Gulf oil. It is building an oil pipeline from China through Pakistan so that it soon can access oil through that overland route. The idea that China is going to permit someone to put its thumb on what is a new jugular vein, I think is pretty fanciful uh, analysis. So I'd like to know from the Minister, when he comes to wind up, why is the British government insisting that this remains a bilateral conflict? This is a fantasy. It is a fantasy enshrined in the treaty, in the Treaty of Simla. But in recent days, we have had the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan, say that that treaty is dead. It is no longer a bilateral issue. And by its unilateral action to suspend Article 370 of the Constitution, unilateral action, by the way, which is prohibited by the Treaty of Simla, President Modi has said in clear terms that this is now something that requires a multilateral solution. President Modi's decision to suspend Article 370 has set the stage for what is an incredibly dangerous slide to violence. He has set the stage in a way where there is risk now multiplied by the decision to deploy thousands more troops to what is already one of the most militarised areas on earth. And that danger, in turn, has been multiplied yet again by the decision to suspend all communications and put the people under curfew in what surely must be one of the largest open prisons on the planet. Now, we signed a treaty, the Instrument of Accession, on the 26th of October 1947. We're a party to this, in a way. That treaty has now been breached. We've heard nothing from the British government about how they plan to remedy this. But crucially, what ministers have accepted is that human rights are always a multilateral issue. And so what we must hear from a government which has set out before this parliament a clear determination to put itself at the forefront of solving, in its own words, the most complex international security difficulties. We now need a plan from them to stand up for the interests of British citizens. I'm not the only one on these benches, I'm not the only one in this House who has got cases coming to them from people with friends and families in the area and they've no idea what's going on with them because there has been a communications blackout. But crucially, what we now need from this government, Madam Deputy Speaker, is clear and urgent action in the United Nations to ensure that the Office of the Human Rights Observer in the UN is given free and unfettered access to the area on both the Pakistan side and on the Indian side too. I want to know from the Minister what he has done to pursue this agenda in the United Nations. Finally, Madam Deputy Speaker, surely the time has come. If we are to put ourselves at the forefront of solving international difficulties, that we push for a multilateral solution to this decades-long injustice. There have been 295 international disputes between the Second World War and the 1990s that involved the use of force by one state on the other. 171 of them have entailed some kind of negotiation. And where the difficulties were the most intractable and where the breakthroughs were most significant were when we accepted that there was only a multilateral path to peace. That's why we ourselves turned to Senator Mitchell to help broker the Good Friday Agreement. That is why the world turned to President Carter to help broker the Camp David Agreements. That is why we turned to Richard Holbrooke to help bring about the Ohio Accords. This is an injustice which has gone on for too long. And if the government is serious about what it says, and we never know, Madam Deputy Speaker, perhaps it is, it will step up to its responsibility to bring this injustice to an end.
नजीम दिल्ली पर पाकिस्तान के साथ इंतजाम मत आज सुल्तान इबाल के कैंपेन ऑफिस पे आए हैं ने वेलकम कहते हैं सिर्फ साहब वेलकम तू दिल्ली पर पाकिस्तान की हाल चाल बहुत बढ़िया मेरे बिना पानी पे स्मूथ आश्चर्य और सलाम अलैकुम मुसलमान सिख हिंदू ईसाई जोड़े आ सारे निकलना चाहिए सारे कनेडियन निकलना चाहिए आ वोट जो असं कैनेडा वास्ते पा रहे हैं तो कैनेडा की वैलफेयरिंग वास्ते तो अपने लोगों की वैलफेयरिंग करते हैं और जो है सू चाहिए कि असं अपनी हर वोट जी वापसी बन करिए मैं तो नैचुरली ये कहना हाँ हाँ तुम आपके मनपसंद मीजन पर बैक बहुत सुखकारी और वो नुमाइंदा जिधर लोकल और पर्चे का नुमाइंदा इस कांस्टिट्यूएंसी में बच्चे ने हमेशा ये नहीं है जितने आवाज सभी मुट्ठी में बयान की थी उसे ना जो सभी कम्युनिटीज में इश्यूज बयान हो रही है उसे ठोक जाके चलिए और हाँ जी बिल्कुल नजरी ने थे मुकाबला बड़ा घन करेजनल होना जितना बदल आया इस तरह बदल करें दी भी है सारे कैंडिडेट जेड़े हैं वो अपने अपने वोटां से अपील करते पे थानू जेड़ा बंदा जेड़ा चंगल लगता कैंडिडेट उन्होंने वोट तो वो पाने अपना फ्यूचर सोच के वोट देना बिस्मिल्लाह रहमान रहीम अल्हम والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وعظيمنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه الغر الميامين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله Prime Minister Dr. Qadri Respected ulama, guests, brothers and sisters, I bid you the Islamic greeting of Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The reason we exist is mercy. The reason we live is mercy. God is mercy. Our salvation lies in His mercy. But the reality is that the world that we live in today is a world devoid of mercy. Wherever you look in the world, you're searching for mercy. You're searching for rahmah. You're seeing children die innocently in the world. You're seeing many orphans, yatims everywhere. There are many widows with no one to look after them. You're seeing a lack of mercy as well between Muslims, where each Muslim sect is condemning another to hell, rather than inviting each other towards heaven. You're seeing a world where we're condemning non-Muslims towards hell, as if we are the ones who are in charge of heaven and hell. Everywhere we look in the world today, the world is crying out for mercy, a resource of mercy, a syllabus of mercy, a manifesto of mercy, or a constitution of mercy. The question arises: Where do we find this mercy symbolized, or where do we find it manifested? And one of the solutions. can be found in the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. If we were to look at the life of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, then we'll realize what the meaning of the verse was, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ This wonderful endeavor from the Prime Minister and from Dr. Qadri to try and understand the meaning of the mercy for mankind is something fundamental in the world today. Whether it's in Yemen or in Syria, whether it's in Iraq or in India and Pakistan or in Afghanistan, there are children who are screaming for a merciful figure who we are able to implement in our lives. I've heard a lot of poetry in this conference. I've heard people reciting the Quran. 
I've heard beautiful sentences. But what exactly does it mean when we say that the Prophet Muhammad is a Rahma lil Alameen? There are many who quote this ayah, Rahma lil Alameen. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ But what exactly did God mean by this statement? If you were to look at the life of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, you'll find that every aspect of his life was mercy towards every creation of Allah, not just the human being. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ It meant that the humans, the animals, the plants, the solar system, all of them received some sort of rahmah from the existence of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we sponsored one orphan, there are many of us who may not even have sponsored one. Whereas the Prophet said, he who sponsors an orphan is like this with me in Jannah. How many of us today have come in the wilada of the Holy Prophet, in the week of the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal, we have come here to honor him, and to follow him. It's one thing saying, I love Muhammad. It's another following Muhammad. Therefore, on the second level, the orphan. On the third level, the widow. When Umar ibn al-Khattab's daughter Hafsa had nobody to marry, which man stood up and said, I will marry her? When Umm Salama was a widow and had nobody to marry her, which man said, I will stand up and marry her? There are many who attack him. And they say that he is a man who had a number of wives. They're right. He did have a number of wives. But did you ever ask what the social reform program was when he married these wives? It was a rahmah, a manifestation of Allah's rahmah on earth through Muhammad. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want to see these ladies who had lost their husbands live in a world where no one will protect them. Have we asked ourselves how many widows exist in the world today? How many people have looked after them? You don't need to marry the widow, but at least ask about her. You don't need to marry the widow, but don't exploit her. Because there are many today when they see a widow, they know that this lady is in need. They know that this lady may not be educated. And you'll see that they show a lack of rahmah by exploiting her. Whereas the Holy Prophet said, no, I, your prophet, I was married to Khadija 26 years. I did not marry anyone else. But now, if it means I'm going to marry others so that I set an example of Rahmah for you, so likewise make sure you set an example of Rahmah for the widows as well. Therefore you had Rahmah towards animals, Rahmah towards orphans, Rahmah towards widows, Rahmah towards the poor. How many of us waste food when we go to a fancy restaurant where we don't think twice about gathering the food that we've left at the end? Do you know how many of us do israf and how many of us do tabdir, where many of us do not consider extravagance, where some of us have even such a lack of rahmah that at the end of our meal we tell the waiter, take it back, take it back. And if someone tells us, let's collect it, we look down at them. Why? Do you know how many are on the street today with no, nothing to eat? Go to the fancy restaurant. No one said it's haram. But at the end, even one small prawn can make a difference to somebody. At the end, one piece of bread. One piece of bread can make a difference. Sometimes we go to Muslim weddings, the amount of israf is unbelievable. Generosity is one thing. But do you see how much rice is spilt on the ground? Do you see how many people fill up their plates and leave their plates half full? Where is the rahmah of the man? who would look after Ashab al-Suffa. Ashab al-Suffa, the speaker earlier mentioned Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira used to be of Ashab al-Suffa. They were poor. Ashab used to stay by the mosque of the Prophet. Which man came and said, bring the poor next to me, and then said, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتِ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةِ قُلُوبَهُمْ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ One man came and said, get sadaqah together. Get zakat together. Look at ways in which we can eradicate poverty. When Allah has been rahim to you by giving you wealth, be rahim by giving some of that wealth back to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then after that, you have the rahmah towards whom? The rahmah towards non-Muslims. The most arrogant thing for a Muslim to do 
is to think they are the only ones going to Jannah. There are many Muslims out there today, arrogantly think they're the only ones Allah created Jannah for. Who are you? Maliki Yawmuddin? You're not Maliki Yawmuddin. So why do you walk around like you are Maliki Yawmuddin? There are many Christians out there who are more Muhammadan in their character than Muslims. There are Jews out there who are more Muhammadan in their character than Muslims. There are others of no faith, but their akhlaq is the best akhlaq. When I see a non-Muslim, Ali ibn Abi Talib showed it beautifully when he said, people are of two types. They are either your brothers in faith or your equals in humanity. That's it. People are either my brothers in faith or my equals in humanity. When the Holy Prophet saw other non-Muslims, did he say kill them because they believe Jesus is the Son of God? Did he say kill them because they believe Moses is? No. قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْ Say, O oh people of the book, come. إِلَىٰ كَنْلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ أَلَّا نَعْبُدَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَا نُشْكَ بِهِ شَيْئًا وَلَا يَتَّغِدْ بَعْضُنَا بَعْضًا أَرْبَابًا دُونَ اللَّهِ O oh people of the book, I ask all of your question here in this assembly. Torah is the book of the Jews, do you agree? Injil is the book of the Christians, do you agree? Quran is the book of the Muslims, do you agree? Why does Allah say, Ya Ahl al-Kitab, O oh people of the book? UDC design. Aapko apne ghar ki nakshon ke liye Vancouver lower mainland mein jahan bhi aapko zaroot ho, aap apne nakshe UDC design से बनवाइए ये आपके मकान को चार चांद लगा देंगे नंबर है 7788858794 All your tax and accounting services call Zahid Chaudhary at unit 202775128 street 6047794989 Zahid Chaudhary for your tax and accounting services Oh, 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 oh,